Every time I think I am settled on a particular smart home ecosystem, my eye just starts to wander, kind of like the guy in that meme. Hubba hubba. As in smart home hub. It's a problem. And I've been using Amazon Alexa ever since it first existed, and I've barely even used HomeKit because at the time it was way too expensive until very recently. Very recently, companies like SwitchBot have started doing Matter support, and because Apple HomeKit works with Matter-enabled devices, we now have some of the cheapest devices on the market open to HomeKit too. This means I could use Apple's geofencing to actually unlock my front door as I approached the house simply because my iPhone came into contact with my Wi-Fi network. This is something you can't do with Amazon Alexa. And the SwitchBot lock is probably the most impressive robot I've seen since Mark Zuckerberg. Do you agree? Senator, I have not heard that. It's so realistic. Almost human. Hey Mark, you eventually wipe out the human race, do you think? You reckon you're gonna wipe out humanity? Wipe out the human race? Kill all the humans? Senator, I don't know. Nah. Nah. Probably not. <laughs> Thanks to SwitchBot for sponsoring today's video. Today we're going to be looking at all the reasons I think that Apple HomeKit actually now craps on Alexa. We're going to be looking at some of the SwitchBot devices that now are matter enabled too, because they make up a big part of the reason it's worth moving. First of all, what is this app? After after all these years, what is this rubbish? When did you ever open up the Alexa app and not immediately swipe to a different page? The main page is just nonsense gibberish bollocks. It seems to be filled with stupid things like a list of recent activities. Do I need to reminisce about the time I turned the gym on? I did it! I know I did it! I remember doing it! It doesn't matter anyway! I could quite happily forget that I did it. Further down, adverts. Why not? Because God forbid you go a day without buying another Amazon speaker! That's a daily task! Want to play an animal game? No! I'm 42 years old! And you know this because just like Facebook, you've harvested all my data! Get rid of all of that and start again! By contrast, the Apple app opens up to a really well broken down page, starting with categories at the top, followed by a live feed of my front door camera, and then access to all my devices. If I want to make changes to a device or edit the home screen, I can just hold down on any of these icons to get to its options, and the home screen is entirely customizable. People are always asking me, how can I get all my devices into just one app? Well, if they're Apple HomeKit compatible, then you can bring yourself to buy an iPhone. This is it. Good. Good. Day number two. Geofencing. Why? Why, for the love of God, have they released it to America so that Americans can walk outside of their house, Amazon can go, oh, they've left the house, we'd better lock the door, but in the UK, we can leave our house all day long, and it won't know because it doesn't care. Why doesn't it care? Because Captain Space Muppet told it not to. In Apple HomeKit, it's one of the first things you're offered. As soon as you add a device to the ecosystem, it says, when you leave the house, do you want to turn this thing off? If I could afford to buy my wife an iPhone, I'd be able to do it with two people. Can't, so... Guess I'm stuck with Alexa. Thanks, Captain Space Muppet. Number three. Apple HomeKit's secure video is phenomenal. It doesn't matter which manufacturer made your camera, as long as that camera is HomeKit compatible, you can add them all into Apple HomeKit and scroll through this buttery smooth timeline to look at your individual cameras. Where is the Amazon version of this? Why doesn't it exist? And finally, number four, and this has been something that has been driving me insane since the very beginning. You can't start a routine in Amazon Alexa by having the trigger set as a bulb coming on. Smart bulb comes on, make thing happen. You can do it in HomeKit, right? It's one of the main things I would want to do. If I turn a light on, I want the curtains to close. If I turn a light on, I want the TV to be turned on. If I turn a light on, I want a thing to happen. You can do it in HomeKit. What's wrong with you, Captain Space Muppet?
if you like technology, projectors, smart home equipment, anything basically that is kind of nerdy and cool, please consider subscribing. It, it tells YouTube, that guy's awesome. Show him to more people. As does giving it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. I'm with the show. The blind tilt motor from SwitchBot is entirely unique. To my knowledge, no other company has yet released a product that will screw your wand. There's nothing sexual about screwing your wand. Stop it. You're a wanker, Harry. I'm a what? A wanker. And a thumping good night, wager. Just like everything on this list, the blind motor is now Apple HomeKit ready because it works with Matter. Doesn't mean it doesn't work with Amazon Alexa and Google Home, it does. But if you want to use Apple HomeKit, you can. Similarly, they've now brought out the ability, and this should be mind blowing to HomeKit fans because this is so awesome, right? But they've now brought out the ability that you can train your TV remotes to the SwitchBot Hub 2, and because SwitchBot can learn any infrared remote, it can also advertise it to HomeKit. This means I can actually turn my TV on in the gym using Apple HomeKit routines. I can turn my light switch on and it switches the telly on. In a similar vein to the blind motors, the curtain motors can be installed in literally under a minute. And these things are awesome. They have this thing called quiet drift mode, which allows you to run it super slowly and almost entirely silently if you're wanting to wake up naturally as part of a schedule. You can even buy solar panels for these things that will keep the batteries topped up even in this country where we have no sun. We did see it once. We, uh, we threw rocks at it because we didn't know what it was. And as we discussed at the beginning of the video, the SwitchBot lock now has matter support too. This thing is incredible. It doesn't matter how many times I turn my key in either direction, it monitors that and turns it to the right place to either unlock or lock the door depending on what you've asked it to do. This is the most incredible robot I have ever seen. You think to that, Mark Zuckerberg? Senator, I don't know. The Hub 2 also advertises its temperature and humidity to Apple HomeKit 2, which means you can create routines off the back of those things. On top of this, SwitchBot have now added support for motion sensors, door sensors, and even their FingerBot, which is absolutely perfect for working from home. The full list is on your screen now, but the one that really stands out to me is the SwitchBot Robovax that are coming early next year. We'll finally be able to have HomeKit support for the tiny little baby Robovac, and I love it so much. And now for the elephant in the elephant in the room. Um, you can only add eight SwitchBot devices using Matter currently. This is something SwitchBot are working on, but as it stands, two of those are taken up by temperature and humidity from the hub itself, which means you can only add six devices. That said, and this is important, you can actually group devices together, such as, say, blinds or curtains in a particular room. If you've got two windows in one room with loads of curtain motors and loads of blind motors all doing their thing, you could group them all together and that would just be one device in HomeKit. At time of filming, I can turn my TV on and off, but I can't change TV channel. The only option you get in HomeKit, no matter how many buttons you program up into the SwitchBot hub, is on and off, and that's it. Uh, this is great, but I would really like to be able to use my voice to change TV channel to say BBC One or Sky TV or whatever. Not something you can do right now. Keep, stay, stay tuned. And finally, the SwitchBot FingerBots are advertised to HomeKit as lights, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't change this to be a socket, for example, which would be useful. And the reason is, if I say, turn off all the lights, it'll also turn off my coffee maker, for example, if I've got my FingerBot on my coffee maker. Um, this is something I'd like to see changed, and maybe SwitchBot could work on that. So, my feedback. I'm going to film this entire summing up on the fly. Because I want to give you my my innermost thoughts without spending ages writing them down, I just want to 
make it come out of my face hole and it be my truth. My truth is that I think I am going to stay with Amazon Alexa. I do this all the time. I know you, you watch these videos and go, here we go, another bait and switch. But, oh God, I'm this close. I'm this close to switching it out. But the main problem is, although the routines have better triggers for Apple HomeKit, the endpoints aren't as good. I can't, for example, get Siri to say a thing when I have triggered a routine. There's a wanker in the dining room. Um, at least not easily. You can, you can probably do it using shortcuts, but you can't do it in the native HomeKit ecosystem. Uh, the same is true of things like Spotify. I can't just make Spotify play a playlist as part of a routine. It just gives you the option for uh, Apple Music because, oh, God forbid, I might want to use someone else's system. Um, this sort of thing frustrates the life out of me, and it's kind of typical... See, I told you it's not scripted. It's kind of typical Apple. I want to be able to do a thing and Apple don't want me to do it that way, so I can't, and that's the end of it. So right now I am this close and I have actually set up all of my devices and I'm thinking about it, but um, I still think the best system in the world right now is some kind of combination of Home Assistant and Amazon Alexa routines. Uh, that's, that's all there is to it, sorry. Either way, none of that matters because SwitchBot stuff works across all platforms and SwitchBot stuff is entirely unique. You can't get it anywhere else and it does work with Apple HomeKit, it does work with Google Home, it does work with Amazon Alexa and it does work with Home Assistant. If you're interested in buying any of the things I've featured in today's video, check in the description, that's where the links are. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed today's video, thanks to these people here. Without them, I would still be working in a call center. These incredible people are my patrons from Patreon. Without them, honestly, I wouldn't be here. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that. I wouldn't be dead or anything. You could do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I would genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Xs and my threads and my TikToks and all of those good things. Come and hang out there and can be best friends. See you next time. These little dudes can be installed. I'm not going to say that. Don't say that. These little dudes, you sound like a right Muppet. <laughs> Word of the day, Muppet. And finally, the SwitchBot finger bots only... <laughs>